Hi everyone, it's Celine from Blue Cala Patterns. Yesterday on Instagram I posted some waxed canvas that I waxed myself along with a, a tote that I made from the wax and I got a lot of positive responses and a lot of questions asking to share um, exactly what I did uh, to wax my canvas, what wax I used and what was my application process. So I'm going to share that with you today. Now I'm not an expert by any means. I just did a lot of research online. I read a lot of discussion groups and online tutorials uh, where people shared their techniques and I decided to order some wax and give it a try. Uh, there's quite a few different ways to apply wax. Um, I searched on YouTube and I found a few techniques that I wanted to try that I thought looked fairly quick and easy. So first, uh, I did find a bulk wax supplier. I just googled um, bulk candle supplies, uh, candle making supplies, and I found a local place that sells bulk wax. I wanted to make a wax that is a combination of beeswax, natural beeswax, um, and paraffin wax. Now. You can get beeswax in either white or natural. This is the natural. Um, and you can get paraffin wax uh, in a lot of different formats. I think it's based on the, um, the melting point. So what temperature is required to melt the paraffin wax. Now I wanted a softer wax because beeswax is actually pretty hard and brittle. Uh, so I wanted to kind of balance that out. I got the paraffin wax that is made specifically for container candles. Uh, it, you'll see it's it's really, um, it's quite uh, soft and creamy and also sticky and messy. Um, so I decided to try this kind. I could buy the paraffin wax in 10 pound blocks. I'm almost, I've almost finished the whole block. It was actually about four times the size and the beeswax came in 10 ounce packages. Now, in terms of the quantities of each, uh, there's a lot of different uh, quantities, uh, ratios that you can use. I decided to go with one part beeswax to two parts paraffin wax. And you need roughly 12 ounces of wax to wax one yard of 10 ounce cotton duck canvas. Now. This may be different for you depending on what kind of paraffin wax you buy. I'm just um, explaining how much I used for the type of wax that I bought and the type of canvas that I was using. So I did about 12 ounces for a yard. So I used four ounces of beeswax and eight ounces of the paraffin wax. I have a kitchen scale, so I'm able to measure and to weigh uh, exactly how much I need of either one. And then um, it's pretty simple. You're going to want to melt the wax. Um, you can probably just do it on a pot on your stove, uh, but I saw uh, one lady doing it on, on YouTube and she actually um, was just using a slow cooker. So I went on Amazon and I got myself in an expensive, uh, inexpensive, um, a crock pot for $20 and you'll also need an iron. Now I didn't want to use my good iron so I once again went to Amazon and I found this one for $20. Um, it's just a very basic model but it's going to become covered in wax so I, I didn't want to spend a huge amount of money and it actually does a really great job. So here I already have um, my melted wax and the other thing that you're going to need is a paintbrush. Now, I didn't really experiment with different kinds of paintbrushes, different sizes. I just bought an inexpensive bristle brush and it's two and a half inches wide and it's fairly thin. Um, I went with a thinner brush because I was worried that with a, a thicker brush that some of the wax would just build up on the inside and I would end up wasting a lot of wax. Uh, so far, if, you know, this this one has worked uh, quite well for me. So um, I'm just going to set up my, my canvas now and uh, we'll start waxing the canvas. 
so I have one yard of cotton duck canvas. It's a 10 ounce canvas. Uh, once it's waxed, it obviously becomes much heavier, uh, which is why I decided to stick with a 10 ounce and, and I didn't get anything heavier than that. Um, what we're going to do is, you, you'll see like typical fabric, it comes um, two layers with a, with a fold. Um, I'm going to leave it like this. I'm not going to wax one layer at a time. I'm going to go ahead and wax both layers at once. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because when I'm waxing this layer, the wax will actually seep through and start waxing the bottom layer as well, which is great because when I come to wax the other side, it will all already be half waxed and I can just fill in the areas that weren't waxed. Um, now, the one thing that I forgot to mention about the using a crock pot is that it will actually maintain um, the the wax and keep it in a melted state. If you're taking a pot from the stove and bringing it over to your work surface, your wax will cool down and you're going to have to keep heating it up. So one benefit of using a slow cooker is that it's always going to keep your wax melted. Now, before I start um, painting on my wax, um, I like to iron the canvas to warm it up and to also warm up the entire surface so the towel and everything because the warmer the work surface is the more your wax will stay melted while you're applying it um, it takes a lot longer if your wax is constantly hardening while you're trying to to apply it and then it just stays in clumps as opposed to spreading evenly on your canvas so i'm just going to warm up the top portion. Now another important thing that I learned through trial and error is to start at the top and work your way down because if you start at the bottom of your piece and then as you're finishing it you're bringing it down towards you you might uh, splatter some some wax in uh, a part that you've already finished waxing and it becomes frustrating because you keep having to go back and re-wax re the parts that have already been waxed. So I prefer to do it this way. Now we're going to start painting the wax on. Now the first layer is going to take a lot more wax because it's very absorbent and there's no wax underneath, but you'll see that the second side, it will take a lot less time and a lot less wax. In total, I would say I can wax a full yard in about half an hour, give or take. And I've also found that certain colors of canvas require more wax. I'm not really sure why that is, maybe something to do with the dye. Uh, I really, I'm really not sure. Now I've applied my wax. I'm going to iron it in. Now what this is doing is it's melting the wax and it's making it well, melt evenly. Now when you're ironing, you're going to want to do this in a well ventilated area. If you have a window that you can open, um, I highly recommend that. I just have a, a fan going. It's a bit cold outside to be opening windows. Now when you're ironing, iron in circular motions and don't allow your iron to rest in one spot for too long because it will actually leave um, the the impression of your of your plate on your iron on your canvas and you don't want that so as you can see it kind of fills in really nicely with the iron and all of the excess wax will first go into the bottom layer and then any additional wax will be absorbed by your towel and then we just keep going 
and work our way all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. Now I'm not going to show you the waxing process for the entire yard of canvas because everyone will fall asleep on me. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this yard and then I'm going to turn the yard over and show you uh, uh, waxing of the second side. Um, I finished waxing uh, one side of my yard of canvas. Now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to wax the other side. I'm going to start from the end where I just finished because it's nice and warm um, already and the wax will go on nicely. So you can see that some of the wax from the first side went all the way through to the second side. So I'm going to need to use less wax to do the second side. Um, once I've finished uh, filling in the spots on this side. I'm going to open up the entire piece. I'm going to press it all because sometimes um, if I've added too much wax in a certain spot there will be a little bit of a wax buildup between the two layers and I want to make sure that the wax is nice and even. Um, also I need to uh, check the fold. Uh, make sure that there's no wax buildup on the fold and if there's a spot that I, I've missed, I'm going to fill that in and iron it again. So as I'm doing the second side, I'm not going to brush the wax on everywhere. I am just going to add bits of um, wax in the areas that weren't waxed uh, when I did the first side. And I'm gonna go again right up to the fold. So you can see that the second side is going to require a lot less wax than the first side. Again, you do the same. You make sure you're going in circular motion and you also make sure that you don't rest your iron in one spot for too long. You just keep your iron moving. I'm going to go ahead and finish this side and then I'll come back when it's time to open up the fabric. I've just finished waxing the second side. Now I'm going to open it up and I'm going to have a look to make sure that I don't have any areas that have too much wax. I see a little area here. So if you see an area that looks a little shiny, you probably have too much wax in that area. And you can just uh, go over over that area with your iron again and it'll spread. It'll spread um, evenly. Now I need to just go over the crease in the middle to make sure that it's all properly waxed. My work surface is not quite big enough for this, but I'll move it around and do my best. Looks like there's enough wax, so I'm just going to press it. Okay, so now here's a little area where I have too much wax, so I'm just going to go over that area again. Here. And I'm just going to keep working the area of the crease just to make sure that it's all even. <clears throat> now I'm going to finish this. And then I'm just going to show you a finished bag that I made. And I'm going to do a little water test on it so you can see that it is now waterproof. All right, this looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang this up. I have some clothing racks. Uh, once I'm done waxing the full yard, I just drape it over a clothing rack and I let it cure for at least 24 hours. 
Um, you can do it longer if you want, it, it won't harm it. The color may lighten a tiny bit once it's been, uh, once it's fully dry. Um, but I find for the most part, uh, this is the, ends up being the final color. And then when it dries and you crinkle it, you can see the crinkles. Um, they add great character to the canvas and uh, the crinkles actually end up being the original color, which is kind of interesting. Um, so I'm going to show you the water test on the finished bag. Now here's a finished bag that I've made. Um, I'm just going to sprinkle the water on it so you can see how the water just sort of beads. I'm not sure if you can, can see that. But the water droplets kind of stay on top and then I'll just put paper towel and you'll see that the water just absorbs and wipes right off and the canvas is, is completely dry underneath. And that's the end of my um, waxing tutorial. Um, again, I'm not an expert. This is just uh, uh, how I wax canvas based on my uh, research and my trial and error. Um, if you have any questions, uh, there is a blog post on my website about waxing canvas. It's, I've included the link in the description below. Uh, feel free to contact me uh, with any questions that you have. You can contact me through the contact page on my website or you can email me at bluecalacreations at gmail.com. Thanks.